So this is Wi-Fi digital exams. This is university exams um, run over Wi-Fi with BYOD clients. Just so you can get an idea of what was achieved last year, we delivered over 22,000 university digital exams in semester one and delivered over 34,000 digital exams in semester two. And this year, they've asked us to double it again. Most of the venues in universities don't, aren't good for Wi-Fi. If you can see in this building, one side of the building is all glass. The roof is too high for most APs and the other side is made of wood, which is extinct, so you don't think they're gonna let us drill into it. We were lucky to find that that little piece of wood between the panels isn't extinct wood, so we were allowed to mount them there. But of course, the Heritage Council wanted them to disappear into the woodwork, so we had to paint everything. So we painted every little part except the AP so the warranties wouldn't be void. And as you can see, they disappear into the woodwork on that side. And on this side, they disappear into the marble on this side. But that was a small venue. It did 350 clients. We needed a bigger venue. This venue is an exhibition building which the university hired for three weeks. It can handle 3,500 students. You only have one day to set up. The university doesn't want to hold the rental on this property for that long, so the quicker you set up and the quicker you get out, the better. So you have one day to set up everything. We started small with the first phase of 1,000 seats. You need to make sure you have redundant everything. You need to have UPS power. You need to have no noise. The fans on the switches can't be making noise. And you need to protect all the cables. It is so important to protect the cables. There are so many people walking around installing stuff that the fibre cables get broken very, very easily. And the other big one is don't use RRM. You don't want anything changing while the exams are running. Of course, this building is heritage listed as well, and we're not allowed to even scratch the paint. So three months before the exams, we had special brackets made up that go around the poles. And you always need to be ready for the left field things, like they installed heaters directly above the access point. But in the end, I think you'll agree, the actual installation was very impressive, and it, and it worked flawlessly. You also need to remember you need to put power on every desk. I pitied the poor electrician who had to wire it up, but there was a power point on every desk just in case the power went out just before the end of the three hour exam. In digital exams, there's no time for things to go wrong. The three hour exams are back to back. You need to make sure the exam provider has all the VMs spun up in the AWS center before the exam starts. There is no time for the students to connect to the Wi-Fi. It has to be fully automatic and the users just need to connect. If there's any issues, you just need to swap out the device. There is no time for troubleshooting. We had a pool of 400 devices which we used to swap out. A lot of students pre-booked devices because they knew their laptops were rubbish. The big thing you need to do is test, test, test. Having a fleet of laptops meant we could do some testing. This is a test that we did with 100 laptops. We put software on them that simulated the students doing their exams and we ran it just with one access point to the point where we found that where the sweet spot was, where it was not too busy but we, and not too many clients were on the network. What we did find, however, was the exam software was saving with every keystroke. So as the kids were typing their essays, every packet was going to the cloud. Now, we thought this was going to be a problem, but in the end, it was a godsend. Because if anything went wrong with the person's PC, we could swap it out, put a new PC in, and they would continue on where they left off. Don't try and test like this. It was getting pretty tiring once you'd set it all up, and we were not wanting to put all the laptops out, but you can't not put them out. It doesn't work when they're all just sitting in one spot. You need to make sure that layer one is perfect. All of the cables are patch leads. You don't know after you've unrolled them whether they're still any good. So you need to test every cable. The exam scheduling software is not your friend. It will schedule every digital exam right next to each other. So even if you have empty seats, they will all be up in one corner. You need to have some sort of sticker on the desk so the students know how to 
connect to the Wi-Fi and what they need to do. The main thing you need to do is monitor the exams. There, there's always a chance for something to go wrong. We found Ekehau very, very useful for watching the spectrum and we could tell by the patterns going up the screen um, that the, the exam was running well. But if we did have a client going rogue, we, could, we then pulled out Channelizer or, or Tonic and you could see at a glance with the circle um, packet capture which client was chewing all the data. We could then look that up on 802.1x and swap out their laptop. DNAC was invaluable for monitoring all the equipment. In this instance, we had a switch that had a faulty stack cable, and that's why its health was only eight. We found NetAlley invaluable for testing the load balancing. It would tell us when the, the APs were load balancing, and we also found it extremely useful for tracking down, tracking down those students that were trying to do the exam on their hotspot. NetAlley could also produce a very nice picture of what the topology looked like. DNAT gave us a great indication of what the clients were thinking of the network. As you can see from this, these graphs, most clients were getting very high connection rates, very good RSSI, and the green in that bottom right corner is meaning they have 10 out of 10 client scores. When the, when the students walk in and they connect their laptop to the power and connect to high-speed Wi-Fi, that's a recipe for syncing. All the, all the laptops want to do their latest iCloud update. They want to sync their OneDrive. So for the first 15 minutes of the exam, the network is absolutely slammed. During that time, though, it was reading time, so it was a blessing. So we were able to, the students were able to read their exams while all the syncing on their laptops were happening. This is what it looked like. The observant among you will notice that we didn't use a channel 144 and 165 in Australia, and that was because of a Cisco bug. Cisco had a bug in their 9130s that didn't allow those two channels to be used in Australia, even though we're allowed to use them. The more observant among you will notice that we didn't use channel 149, even though it's absolutely being slammed. When you get 500 Macs in a room, that channel becomes unusable. They are just broadcasting themselves, please come and airdrop to me, and the M M Bonjour and MDNS traffic makes that channel unusable. Another big problem is the bags. Our iPads in their bags and they leave them on. So we had to install access points in all the bag areas so that we could honeypot those, AP those connections onto other APs so they didn't connect to the digital infrastructure. Another solution we found was to put all the bags in shipping containers and then close the doors when the exam started. Also, the paper exams area needed some APs. Students were allowed to bring their, their phones in and put them under the, under the chair. But students seem to think turning off your phone means putting it in silent mode, which meant they still connected to the network. So having a few APs around the paper exams meant they didn't connect to the, the digital exam infrastructure. You need to have plenty of signage around. Once the student enters the exam, they're not allowed to leave. Be ready for the unexpected. In Australia, we had the biggest telecommunications outage in Australia's history. Optus went down, had 10 million customers affected. I got the phone call at four o'clock in the morning, is this gonna affect our exams? And I said, no, because we're not using Optus for our internet. But the big issue was the students were using, the, might be using Optus for their two-factor for their phones, and they needed two-factor to get into the exams. So for this exam, we let all the students on the Wi-Fi so they could do their two-factor. We had great Wi-Fi 6 adoption, but what we found really interesting was it varied between subjects. Subjects like law and uh, medicine, almost 98% had Wi-Fi 6 clients, but a lot of the science subjects only had about 50% Wi-Fi 6 clients. We needed to enable edgy roam because a lot of students didn't listen to instructions and still didn't have their, their, have their laptop connected to the right SSID and trying to deal with 149 clients at the start of exam is just too many. If you look at that graph at the bottom, you can see that a lot of students must have found this one easy and started leaving halfway through the exam. In second semester, they wanted to put more capacity in, but we were at the limit of what we could put in the air. 
there's only a limited amount of data that the air will hold. But what we, what we found is because the building is so long, we were able to set up another network at the other end and the two, two networks could run side by side without the channels interfering. You need to have two 10 gigabit internet links. We were peaking at eight gigabits per second when, the, when they said start typing. And we also found that the APs need to be on mgig ports. When they say start typing and they start downloading the exam, we were getting a lot of port drops on the AP Ethernet ports when they're on one gig, but putting them on five gigs stopped that. Also with load balancing, you only need to have one kick. Uh, that, was a, a, that meant that clients that were a bit sensitive came back without, without any problems. Over the three week period, we used just about nine terabytes of data both ways. This year, we're gonna use the 9166s because we need six gig if we're gonna add more clients. We only have 25 channels in Australia, but that should be a good start. But of course, we've been testing. This is my back garden, and I set up a grid with one meter grid so that I could work out what the cell sizes were for this particular AP. And this is what it looked like. We all know how hard it is to set channel powers in Cisco. You have to use a number, not, in, not DBM. And I'm gonna leave you with a funny picture that um, reminded me of Keith when I walked into the room. We all know we shouldn't put our APs on a wall like a clock. But is it, is it okay to mount them either side of a clock? Thank you. <laughs>